you can have that and not have you can have that gene or have it look like that when you look at yourself but not yeah. have ever had mono or would you have had it can you be exposed to it and it shows it shows that gene when you do your blood work but not have ever had the symptoms of it okay so so the question is is it possible to possible to be infected by a viral gene without manifesting the symptoms and the answer is absolutely okay because again if 30 percent of the human genome is viral dna you likely haven't had all those viruses a portion of that replication was in the dna that came from either mother or father to you does that make sense yeah it has already been inserted into that. That's why we'll actually see patients with Lyme disease, which is another cause of chronic fatigue syndrome. Lyme disease, which is a spirochete, okay, that spirochete may actually pass on from parent to child without even knowing that they've done that. But spirochetes are no respecter of boundaries. They're a bacterium that's a corkscrew that will actually burrow its way through and find its way into the brain, find its way into the connective tissues, find its way into the organs, and it creates all kinds of havoc, including fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and so on. So infections are very common causes of chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay, so that's the next <laughs> take home of that. Okay, if I have a chronic infection, if I have chronic adrenal exhaustion, we look at then another potential cause is blood sugar dysregulation. I want to reach for another color and that one's just dead. So blood sugar dysregulation is also a cause of chronic fatigue. Okay? When the blood sugar is down, what happens to my body? I'll feel very tired or fatigued, right? Irritable, uh, loss of motivation, loss of activation. Blood sugar is essential in maintaining brain potentiation, and chronic fatigue may be associated with a blood sugar imbalance. Okay? Well, that's one of the deal breakers that we've talked about before with adrenals, remember? We've talked about blood sugar imbalances, we've talked about anemias, we've talked about food sensitivities or allergies, and then we've talked about infections. Well, that's exactly what we'd be looking at then with adrenal exhaustion and chronic fatigue syndromes and fibromyalgia. Okay? Yay! Thank you. Wow, we can do a dance. Thank you. I'll spare you the dance. We could do it, but we'll spare you the dance. Thanks, Dr. Robertson. So, everybody okay with that to this point? So, do you have any of these? If you have chronic fatigue syndrome, has, have you looked with your physician for these types of weaknesses in the body? If you haven't, if you haven't, if you haven't, then we're probably missing the link and just taking more of Cymbalta or Lexapro or whatever the case may be is not going to be a correction, okay? It may get me through, maybe taking Lanesta to help me to sleep at night, maybe taking Ambien to help me to sleep at night, may give me a, a tranquilized or a drug-induced coma, right? When a person comes to your office and you put them under to have their tooth numb or their face worked on, right? Do you wake up feeling refreshed? Oh, whoo, I need that four hours. Is it restful? Not really. And that's the, the tough thing about a drug-induced coma, if you will, or sleep state. It's really not rest. Yes, I checked out, but did my brain really rest? You know, when a patient wakes up from being anesthetized, do most of them say, well, that's the best rest I've had? Typically not, okay? It's typically, well, I still feel really tired, but I don't know why, okay? So similarly, do you know now they're actually associating more and more auto accidents? Um, with those who are using a sleep aid. Have you been aware of that? With the increase of the use of Ambien and Gunesta, we also see more uh, accidents, motor vehicle accidents. And with that, or motor vehicle collisions, the police officers say they no longer call them accidents, they call them collisions. Okay? 
but they say that with that consistently now they're finding many of those people are on some type of sleep aid. I, I can't remember the exact statistic, but it was over half of the accidents now actually are related to sleep Meaning aids. they're coming off of it in the morning kind of thing? They're waking, yeah. They, so they've taken their they're sleep aid at night, but now they're sleep. still drowsy. Just because it's morning it's hours doesn't mean that they're still, all their, right, exactly, all so it's just a delay and, and they still feel. And there's even some consumers who are actually doing things in their sleep, waking up and driving. Correct. And they think, they don't know, they think they're asleep, but they're actually motor skills are engaging. Correct. And that's rarer, but... Correct, but it is actually happening. So, so they they aren't they aren't correct. It's as if, like when a person comes out of having their wisdom teeth extracted, they're talking to you, they're walking out, and they get into the car, and then they look and they say, "How did I get here?" And all the way home, and finally they actually come off of the effect of the sedation, and say, um, "Hmm, where am I?" Right. So it's similar to uh, alcohol use as well. So when the brain is sedated there may not be a cognitive recognition of my surrounding and that's what's happening very often there okay so is that though a correction for chronic fatigue the answer is absolutely not okay and I want to show you one more thing that I think is pretty fascinating as far as looking at getting to a solution in a pain syndrome so fibromyalgia or any pain, pain syndrome and chronic fatigue syndrome falls into that as well because of the disparity in the brain. So I'll actually go on uh, from here and we'll look at something that I think is really fascinating about treating these types of conditions appropriately and upregulating then neurologic output for brain. When we look at the brain itself, the whole brain is intended to function for efficiency. So if we look at a most healthy brain, its intention is to actually function optimally with efficiency side to side. So what we see is there's a left brain and there's a right brain. The left brain is primarily related to motor motoricity, okay? And the right brain is going to be a very much stimulated in sensory. So what we find is typically the right brain will sense everything coming from the left body. And so we see this crossover pattern for uh, brain recognition. Okay. So what happens though in the chronic fatigue patient is that also the right brain has a bilateral somatosensory map. So the brain actually recognizes the right side as well and what starts to happen is when this brain hemisphere becomes imbalanced to the opposite side it will start to spontaneously identify or recognize pains that are summating or th starting to fire without a true trauma or an organic response. Okay. In other words the brain imbalance may create for us the imbalance associated with the pain perception or recognition. Remember a few weeks ago we had talked about how there is a hypothalamic area in the brain where the thalamus and hypothalamus, so the thalamus and hypothalamus, then the pituitary which hangs down from that. What we find is the thalamus is actually a projector, remember, onto the big screen up above. And that thalamic escape and hypothalamic then inability to suppress what I'm feeling creates for us then a cognitive awareness or a summation of the brain. Let me describe it a different way. When I put my watch on in the morning, I knew that my watch was in the right spot when I set it on there, but I don't continue to think about the fact that my watch is on my left wrist. Although the thalamus is still perceiving that, my big brain now is sending a, a reflexive message back to inhibit that awareness so I can focus on other things. I can converse with someone or I can think about what I need to make for dinner or where I need to go to pick the kids up for the next soccer game. So the brain doesn't have to constantly think about that. When I stuck my eyeglasses on this morning, they're on and I don't have to keep thinking, okay, are my eyeglasses on? Where are my eyeglasses? And yet sometimes we 
oh yeah, my glasses are on, we forget, okay? Or, oh yeah, there's my ring, or oh yeah, I stuck that little pen around my neck today, that's where I left that. And so that awareness, because the thalamus isn't allowing it to come to threshold, is not perceived cognitively, okay? In the person, though, with fibromyalgia, what starts to happen is, this is no longer dated. It no longer shuts off, so it's constantly feeling, feeling, feeling consciously everything. So just the air going over my arm, just letting that hand pass over my arm, is enough to make them want to withdraw. Oh, that feels so painful. You, you almost touched me. I didn't touch you. I know, you almost touched me. Ah, it hurts so bad. And literally, that's what they'll start to do. Then you'll, you can imagine what kind of relationship that would be like for spouses, right? You'll see these spouses that are, now, don't touch me. Don't touch my hands. This is a lady who came into the office and her spouse is reaching out trying to comfort her as she's just in tears and tears and tears. I'm in so much pain. The spouse is reaching out can, and he, she's withdrawing. Don't touch me. It hurts so badly. Okay? So everything is perceived now as pain. There is no pleasure for that brain. There's a thalamic escape or a midbrain escape, what we call a mesolimbic windup, where this midbrain is so wound up, everything is being projected, and the big brain isn't able to suppress it. Okay, it can't shut that off. So consequently, what we oftentimes have to do is actually stimulate then very gently the left side to strengthen the left brain to allow it then to get in control and start to suppress that thalamic integration or create again a thalamic inhibition so it doesn't escape and project to my conscious mind where my watch is all day long. Oh, that's my watch. I'm not wearing that anymore. It hurts my arm. Oh, I can't wear these tight clothes. It's just it, the pain is too much for me. Okay? So we actually have to start to do activities from the left side or attempt to stimulate that thalamic area with something as simple as a light. So we may do from the left side a green light stimulation to awaken or bring this summation back into balance to calm down the midbrain and activate the big brain and actually then suppress that. A couple of weeks ago I had a lady with fibromyalgia come in and uh, just sitting in the chair when she'd move or bend forward, she'd have such severe back pain that she wouldn't bend. She'd just sit and lean forward just a little bit, okay? So what we did with her is a very specific exercise for her brain and just did some very simple things for brain and she was able to lean forward and touch her toes. You didn't even touch my back. We didn't have to. We worked on your brain. And just by working on her brain, it started to change her pain threshold. Okay, so that's the really exciting thing that we can start to do is we can change, we can start to change the brain thresholds or brain perception by doing specific exercises that lateralize or bring back into balance that brain perception. Okay, and I think that's really exciting when we start to see those types of changes. Um, and that's, that's really what we want to look at is a, again the whole balance. So really again for all of us the take home tonight when we look at chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia okay what we want to look for are several things number one is there a vitamin mineral lack is there a deficiency specifically D and electrolytes or minerals okay if there's a lack then let's supplement that or correct that in the diet Sometimes these lacks are actually drug induced. So the medication I've been using to treat my fibromyalgia has been depleting my liver's ability to function. I've been on now for so many years uh, hydrocodone, oxycontin, something like that, or a cocktail of pain meds. Now Ambien and Lanesta for sleep as a sleep aid, and then I have my Cymbalta and Lexapro to help me to get going in the morning and to sustain myself during the day. Well, that's going to put a huge burden on my liver and my clearing, which means then that these may be out of balance. That same imbalance then may actually put a huge stress on my adrenal glands. And remember with the adrenals, the more exhausted they become, originally there is primarily one of four deal breakers to recovering the adrenals. 
One of them may be my blood sugar. One of them may be anemia. One may be an infection. Or one may be a food sensitivity. And when we look at food sensitivities, we also look, want to look at toxins. Okay? And one of the primary toxins that we refer to in our body uh, that's put into our systems is in dental work and dentistry. Okay, and we've talked about those a lot, um, and I don't think we need to belabor that tonight. Okay, just be aware of. The next thing we look